step process that we do. Um, step one is the planning process. We've got to be able to un understand what it is we need to do, what the needs are, and how we go about that is, is, is again, a three-step three process. We research those needs at each location. We understand from, from the users of those locations what the needs are. So in this sense, we're listening to what they're saying. Step two is an assessment of those needs, and that's where we are today. We, we're trying to assess what those needs are, discuss in an open forum on how, how those needs can be met and what we can do to, to take care of them. Uh, the third step is a documentation of those needs, and that's when we get finished with this whole process. We'll have documented the needs and are able to use that as a tool for ongoing times with the Board of Education and, 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 and what they're wanting to do with that Step two in the overall process is the implementation process. Uh, at that time, we'll go ahead and assemble the prioritized needs from the facilities master plan. We'll identify funding sources and values of what we're looking to do, and then define detailed solutions at each of the locations. We'll understand exactly what it is we need to do at each location. And then review and, and approval process will be something that we'll do at that time also. Uh, both with the public and through the authorities having jurisdiction. What I wanted to do also tonight is bring up the speed on our calendar of events, basically the, the, the schedule that we've been following. Back in July, we started this process and have had uh, some, some meetings with the users group. We had our first public uh, presentation in October, and then we had other meetings with the user group, to the board, to the steering committee, and here we are tonight kind of in the middle of the process, uh, reporting to you guys on our second uh, public event. And then we'll be continuing this all the way through to March, where we'll again present to the board the facilities master plan update. What we've accomplished to date, the subcommittees at each of the locations were formed, and we've met with them in two workshops, uh, with both the user groups and the steering committees. We've had our first public event, like I mentioned before, in October. We've done a utilization study at each of the locations. Our firm has gone around to all the locations and, and, and really looked at how the schools are utilizing the spaces that they currently have at the facilities. We did a dot storm survey. If uh, any of you were here at our, our previous one, we had you guys put dots up on the, on the information that we had on the board. We did that electronically. And it was, a, it was a success. We had uh, uh, over 100 and some odd people that, that uh, took, took that uh, survey form. And then tonight we're here for the public event. I want to go ahead and uh, get you guys uh, updated on what our categories were for this facilities master plan. We had three categories, life, safety, and security, learning and curriculum, accessibility, and inclusiveness. And those were the three categories that we utilized in gathering the information. All of this in, 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 in an effort to build consensus through the Board of Education, the workshops, the public events, and the online survey. As we look at each one of the, the categories, we had uh, 50 over 50% of the respondents focused in on three of the major items, uh, access control at all entry, Secure main entry vestibule and expand parking and crew drop off uh, for the life and safety and security area. Not to mention that all of the other ones still did get recognition, but those were the top three in over 50% of the respondents. In the other categories, we had the same, same response. In the learning and curriculum, we had the classroom uh, options, both general classroom, engineering, industrial tech, sciences, online learning, motor lab, the major spaces, and special ed. We wanted to get a better understanding of what those other classrooms are more than just the standard classrooms in today's environment. Resource library expansions and upgrades were big items that everybody wanted to make sure the schools had, along with cafeteria and kitchen expansions and upgrades, trying to get those things up to, up to today's environment. Accessibility and inclusiveness, the three on that one were the additional staff and, rest, and student restrooms. Bringing those restrooms up to ADA compliance uh, is a big concern with everybody. A 
additional accessibility entry points, not only at the main entry, but other exterior parts where the teachers do take the kids out for playground time and, and, and that type of stuff. We want to make sure we have good accessible entries. And then creating flexible classrooms for specialized education. That was another high item on the 